Hi guys, hi pet lovers. Thanks for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. Today we're doing a video, it's a supplemental video to our mini series, our Pet Grooming Clippers Demystified series, which covered grooming clippers, the blades, and then the guide combs that fit on the blades, so the whole system. And in the blades and in the guide combs, we went over some maintenance at the end of the videos, how you should maintain your blades and your guide combs. But we really wanted to devote another video on actual maintenance and safety concerns for the clippers themselves. So today we're gonna go through a few points that you wanna make sure that you're focusing on with your grooming clipper to make sure it's safe for you, safe for the pets, and that it's working properly. So if you guys remember from our first episode in the mini series, we talked about professional pet grooming clippers. And one of the seven things that we wanted you to look for when choosing a professional pet grooming clipper is if it has a cordless or corded option. So there's a few things that we're gonna look at what can happen on, let's say, the cordless, and then we're gonna get to go ahead and take a look at the corded options, um, some safety concerns, and some things um, that you should be looking for. So for our cordless variety, like this guy here, they have a power pack. This power pack removes, usually lasts a few years. You can go ahead and recharge this um, in between your visits. So usually comes with a charging base. Um, it's a lithium iron battery usually. We go ahead and charge this in between grooming visits, um, in between your work. You can also go ahead and charge it overnight. Um, but one of the things that can happen is this can run out, okay? And luckily you can just replace the uh, battery pack. You don't have to go ahead and buy a whole new clipper. Now for our corded varieties, um, with the cords, there's some safety concerns that I want to talk about. Um, but before I go into that, some of these corded clippers actually go ahead and have removable uh, power packs. So if this cord, there's a problem with the cord, you can go ahead and just replace the power pack. Now, if you don't have a removable power pack, um, you're going to have to go ahead and get this maintenance. If something happens, I'm going to talk about what can happen. Is There's a lot of friction at this point of the cord, and I have had a lot of my corded clippers start fraying, um, especially at those movement points, at the friction points. You have to be very careful that you have no exposed wire in your cord. Um, exposed wire is very dangerous for you, for the animals that you're working with, and not to mention, if OSHA comes into your place of business for an inspection, they see open wires, and um, this is really not good. So you want to go ahead and get it serviced immediately. If you have no choice but to work with this clipper for the rest of the day um, until you can get it serviced, uh, get electrical tape, bind it really well, make sure you wrap it really well so there is no danger. But my recommendation is if you see any exposed wire, make sure you just stop using that clipper. Go ahead, call your maintenance guy and get that fixed immediately. Now the other thing to do for your clipper is to make sure that it is free of hair, especially you're working with dogs, animals, cats, fur, can fly everywhere. By keeping this clean, you'll make sure that the hair doesn't get into the clipper. Um, you can also go ahead and just use a regular old toothbrush. Now the last thing I wanna show you what happens in grooming salons with the A5 hinge assembly um, is that this hinge can go down sometimes, that pushes in. There is no way to be able to get that off and back up and functional with your fingers. And let me just show you that there's no way to go ahead and get your blade onto that. That hinge is locked in. So always keep a flathead screwdriver, not too thin, not too thick in your salon because that's how you're gonna go ahead and work that hinge back so you can go ahead and put your blade on top of it. And be aware that for every single manufacturer and model, so you have to make sure that you see your model, there's gonna be something called a drive assembly. So this is a part that's really easily replaced. You see those little screws? Basically this comes off and it replaces this entire part that locks into your grooming blades. Um, this, for an example, I had an extra one of these. This is a drive assembly for an Andis clipper. So just to show you, kind of just to see, but this would be like a replacement. Obviously it won't fit my Oster. Make sure you look for the model. But this Andis would fit this Andis model. And with drive assembly screws, you just basically take out the old one, put in the new, and this really helps if the performance of your clipper starts deteriorating. Look at these nubs, make sure that they're fresh, okay? And make sure that if you need to replace your drive assembly, it's very easy. Usually they give an extra one in the box. 
Well, that's about it, guys. Thanks for joining this episode to make sure that you can maintain your clippers properly and make sure that you stay safe when working with your clippers. So I wanna wish you guys a lot of good luck on when choosing your professional grooming clippers, maintaining them so that they last and so that they stay safe. If you have any questions, remember, put them in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, guys, if you like this video, make sure you click that thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more like it. We will see you next time. Thanks so much.